many, many, many years ago, my dad was seeing it's a dressing up room down here. And I tell you, I believe he sung that song more than anybody. I don't think there was anybody in the world that sung that song more than he did. You got to go to heaven from down here is the key. That is the gist of the song. It's a song that focuses on this field that I've been preaching about for the past two months now. This field, this world, it is a dressing up room. It is a place of preparation Mm -hmm. for all of those that desire to go to heaven. If you desire to go to heaven, then you ought to want to look right in order to go there. Mm -hmm. You ought to want to look right in your soul. You ought to want to be right. In other words, if you want to go to heaven, you ought to want to be right in your soul so that you can go there. But sadly, this is thought that has been lost on many in our world today. As we have seen over the last two months, the kingdom of heaven condition of our world today, it is a poor condition. As we see here again in our response to reading for today from the 22nd chapter of Matthew's gospel, as we see down there in the 14th verse, Jesus said that many are called, but few are chosen. The Lord, I want you to understand that he has called out to the world. Not one time, not two times. The Lord has called out over and over and over again. God, he has called out repeatedly for people to turn and to come to him. But how many of us have received, how many of us have listened to his call? Come on, come on. You see, many of us, we have picked up the phone and we swipe reject on God calling out to us. As we have seen Jesus say in recent weeks, the kingdom of heaven is like a man that sowed seed Mm -hmm. in his field. But his seed, it was only able to take root in only a fourth of the field. Satan also went out into the field. And as we saw, he sowed his seed and his seed, it was able to take root everywhere. Mm-hmm. Many people today live by the doctrine of the world. Many people live by the doctrine of the devil. Mm-hmm. And those that choose to live by the doctrine of the devil, they are choosing, I tell you today, to live an incredibly dangerous life. They are choosing to live an incredibly dangerous life spiritually, which will come with a harsh end result Mm -hmm. to where there will be no reward for their soul. Throughout scripture, we are repeatedly warned that the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, we are warned over and over again, repeatedly, that God is coming. He is on his way here. And as I said in a recent sermon, he is coming for his harvest. He is coming for the fruit that has been bad throughout our world. He is coming for a fruit that is holy and righteous. When speaking of his own coming, Jesus, I want you to understand today that he likened his coming to being like a thief. To being like one that would show up at your house unannounced. What shape will your house be in? Will it be clean or will it be a mess? He said, If the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, the master would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken in two. Jesus, he then warned, he said, 
You also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour. You do not expect. Will you be ready? And Jesus, he shared this message to let us know that now is not the time for us to be spiritually complacent. Now is the time for the world to get ready because he is on his way. He is coming. You see, again, we must be fruitful. We must be bearing holy and righteous fruit. But here at the same time today, we see that this world, it is a dressing up room. We see that this world, again, it is a place of preparation. We must make sure that we are dressing our soul appropriately for the coming of God. Do you hear me here today? And so, again, I ask you today, are you getting your soul ready for the kingdom of heaven? Are you getting your heart right with the Lord today? Are you prepared for God to come and knock on your door? Will your house be in order or will your house be a mess? Come on, come on. Come on. Again, as we have seen in recent weeks, Mm -hmm. many of us are doing anything but getting ourselves ready. Many of us are doing anything but getting our house in order. In our scripture for today, we see where Jesus, we see where he spoke about how God has sent out an invitation. He sent out an invite, Mm -hmm. but a few of us are taking that invite seriously. In our scripture for today, Jesus, he again speaks about the kingdom of heaven in a manner that questions the condition of our soul. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he again speaks of the kingdom of heaven in a manner that questions whether or not our soul is ready for God. Jesus, he stated that the kingdom of heaven there in the first and the second verse, he stated that it is like a certain king that arranged a marriage Mm -hmm. for his son. The certain king, of course, is representative of God. And the son there, we should understand, is again representative of Christ himself as well. So again, we see here today in our scripture that the father has arranged a marriage for his son. This marriage, this marriage here, who is it set to be married to the only begotten son? You see, marriage, we know it is important, right? Marriage, we should, again, we should understand today that it is a union where two join together to be one. Marriage, it should be full of devotion. Marriage, it should be full of commitment. Mm -hmm. Marriage, it should be full of trust. You see, the two that come together to be one, they should live in total submission of each other. And in this total submission, there should be complete faith. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, we should understand that the father is not going to allow his only begotten son to marry any old body. I don't know if you hear me here today. The father is not going to let his son marry someone that don't meet those standards of devotion, of commitment, of trust. In other words, the father is not going to let his son marry someone who is not full of faith in him. He's not going to let someone marry his son that is not faithful. So in our scripture today, 
We see where Jesus tells us that the father sought to find a bride for his son. Who is it that would be able to marry the only begotten son? Now, now, how did the father go about doing this? How did the father go about trying to find a bride for Christ? Well, Jesus, he explains to us the father's methods here through this telling of the parable about this certain king here. Pay attention here. Jesus, he explains to us there in the third verse that the king, that the king had already sent out invitations. And after the invitations were sent out, the king, we are told there that he sent out servants to call for those who had been invited. So this, I want you to understand today that it speaks of God having made a covenant with the children of Israel by the giving of the law that he gave to them through Moses. So how did the people respond to the invite? Oh, how do you respond to an invite when you receive an invite in the mail? I guess it depends on who the invite is from. You know, if it's if it's from someone who you like, if it's from someone who you love, you you smile and you can't wait to show up. But uh, if it's from your enemy, you couldn't care less, could you? If it's from somebody that you don't like, you ain't going to give it any kind of attention. You're going to take that invite and you're going to throw it in the trash. So how did the people respond to the invite? How did the children of Israel respond to the invite from the Lord? Jesus, he tells us there in that same verse that the people, that they were not willing to, to come to the wedding. They didn't accept the invite. The children of Israel, they had promised to keep God's covenant, but they broke it pretty much right away. Mm -hmm. When they worshiped the calf of gold before Mount Sinai, when Moses had went up into Mount Sinai to receive the stone tablets, they were not ready Mm -hmm. to be married to the Lord. With them not being willing, we'll see there in the fourth and in the fifth verse there that Jesus, he tells us that the king again sent out some more servants to call on the same people to come to the wedding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet Jesus, he tells us that those same people that they made light of the invite, they made light of it. And Jesus tells us that they went their way. Some, Jesus explains to us there in the sixth verse, some, Jesus said, they even went and they seized the king's servants. Mm -hmm. The one that was calling for them to come to the wedding. They seized them. They killed them. Jesus Mm -hmm. tells us there. Mm This again, we should understand that it speaks to the wickedness of Israel. It speaks to the wickedness of Judah as well as they had all rejected the Lord. You see, they rejected prophets like Isaiah. They rejected prophets like Elijah to go off and to to worship idols like Baal and the Astaroths. Others like Ahab and Jezebel, they apprehended prophets and they killed the prophets as well. We know that by the day of Jesus, we know that John the Baptist was killed by the people. Jesus himself was killed by the people. The whole time, God was sending out an invite. Come to me. Be married to me. And the whole time, the people were saying, I ain't marrying you. Imagine not wanting to be married to the Lord. God, the father was trying to find a bride for his son. But the bride, he desired to marry his son, desired to dwell in and to live in wickedness. The bride desired to live in sin. So, again, do you think that that bride would be worthy 
of the hand of Jesus Christ. I feel that we are left with asking the question, why? Why did the people refuse the father's invitation? And Jesus, he gives us an answer as he tells us that in the fifth verse that the people, they seemingly had other pressing matters that took priority in their life. Yeah, yeah. One went to his field, Jesus tells us there, and the other had business uh-huh. to tend to. God's invite, it was being ignored because it, because he did not come first in their life. Uh-huh. They had other priorities that went over the Lord. Right. What you understand today, as I said in my sermon last week, they were choosing to live in submission of the world rather than falling in love with and living in submission to the Lord. Mm -hmm. What are you living in submission to today? Mm -hmm. Now, in the parable of Jesus, he tells us that the king was furious. How do you suppose the Lord would feel if you turned out his invite? The king, Jesus said, was furious when he had heard what the people had done to his service, how they had treated his service, how they even had apprehended and and killed his servants as well. The king, Jesus tells us there in the seventh verse, sent his armies and destroyed the wicked and burned down their city. Mm -hmm. This speaks to the conquering of the northern kingdom of Israel. This speaks to the destruction of Jerusalem as well as the southern kingdom was defeated and conquered by the Babylonians and they were carried away to Babylon. Again, I tell you today that the Lord, he was not pleased with the bride that he desired for his son. The Lord was not pleased with the ones that he had chosen to be, again, the son's bride. Those that were living wickedly, the Lord, we see he moved against her. And so again, I ask you today, could you imagine Mm -hmm. God sending you an invitation to dwell with him eternally? Because again, that's what marriage is to, to dwell with someone, to be with someone forever. Could you imagine turning down that proposal? That invite from God, God getting down on his knees, saying, marry me. And you falling up his fist and saying, nope, you can go away. I'll I'll go elsewhere. Could you imagine turning down an invite to be married to the Lord? Well, I tell you today that many people do it. Many people, they turn down God's invite without batting an eye. Many people today they're actually turning down being married to the only begotten son of God. Mm-hmm. And Jesus, he actually speaks of this in our parable for today. After the first chosen bride had rejected the wedding invite, we are told there again in the eighth verse that the king said to his servants, the wedding is still on. All right, all right. The king said the wedding is ready. And he again, he sent out some service. But this time, I want you to notice that he sent out the service into the highways rather than to the same old folks that have been making light of the invite. This, we should understand that it speaks of a time shift, if you will. A new age had arrived. It speaks of the age of the church. It speaks of our present age today. Mm-hmm. See, our present age today, it began when Christ got on the cross, died for us, and then rose from the grave with all power in his hands. Yeah, yeah. It began when the apostles, when they went out into the highways mm-hmm. to let the world know about the only begotten son of God. When they went out and they, again, preached repentance, turned away from wickedness, and invited people to come to the Lord. They went out into the highways and they shared the good news. 
They share a word about salvation. Do you want salvation today over this world? Do you desire a home in heaven? Do you desire to be married to Christ? Again, as we have seen in recent weeks, the word of God has been sown throughout our world. The reason for the sowing of the word is so that, again, mankind will turn away from sin. That mankind will repent. That mankind will become holy and righteous. That mankind will bear, again, good fruit. Holy and righteous fruit. Yet, at the same time, I want you to understand today that the invitation, the invite, the word of God, it is filled with instructions. It is filled with instructions to prepare a holy and a righteous bride for Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The church, I want you to understand today, the church is set to be the bride of Christ. You are set to be the bride of Christ. Man and woman, boy and girl, I want you to hear it again today. You are set to be the bride of Christ. The Lord has proposed to you. And if you have accepted his proposal, you are now engaged. You are now engaged to Christ. I ask you again today. Are you getting yourself dressed up for Christ? It's a dressing up room down here. Are you putting on the right materials, the right clothes? Are you getting your soul right and ready to be married to Christ for all of eternity? God, I want you to understand today, he greatly desires for his only begotten son to be married. Mm -hmm. And we we know this because as we see here in this parable, he keeps sending out invitations. Mm -hmm. This is how badly the Lord, the father desires for his only begotten son to be married. Mm -hmm. After Israel, after Judah had sinned, God did not give up on his dream of his son being married. He continued to send out service. He's still sending out service today with the invitation of be there to my son. All right, all right. Yeah, and the great invitation that was first sent out through Christ, it was sent out through the apostles, mm-hmm. is now being sent out through people like me, people like you, mm-hmm. that will go out and minister to someone. The question now is this. Are we receiving God's invite? The question is this. Is it being received today by the world in comparison to those of the Old Testament times? What are we doing with the invite? Are we accepting it? Or are we throwing it off in the trash like those of Old Testament times? I hope today for your sake that you're not taking the invite from the Lord lightly. I hope again for your sake today that you're not taking God's invite, balling it up and throwing it in the trash. Jesus, he tells us in the parable there in the 10th verse, as he looks ahead to a future time, He tells us that the day of the wedding that it had came in the parable. And he tells us that there were many there, both bad and good, were at the wedding. The king, after having sent out so many invitations to this wedding, Mm -hmm. the king went out and he saw the crowd. Mm -hmm. And I imagine for a moment there that the king, he smiled. He said, oh, no. The, 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 the wedding hall, it is, is filled up. Yeah. There are a bunch of folks here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll notice there that there was one particular man in this parable All right. 
that caught the king's eye. Mm -hmm. There was one particular man there that caught the king's attention. Now, I want you to pay very close attention here to what it was about the man that caught the king's eye here. Here in my key verse, Jesus, he tells us that the king, he approached this man. And he, he, again, this man was kind of strange looking to the king. And, you know, he kind of, I don't know if the king approached him cautiously or not, but he approached the man. He approached him. He then spoke to the man. I imagine there was probably a bit of small talk. Hey, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. You know, that kind of small talk. And then he got to uh, a question here. All right, all right. The king, he, he said, friend. Again, I, I, like I said, there was some small talk there. Friend, he said, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? Mm. Is what the king said. This is what caught the king's eye. That's right. What this particular man, what this person was wearing. Mm -hmm. That is what caught the king's attention. The king looked at this man and said, hey, you ain't dressed right. right. How you come in here and you ain't dressed right? You see, the invitation to the wedding, it included the colors that, that he should have been wearing. It, it included the appropriate attire, if you will, for the wedding. You see, this wedding, it wasn't a come as you are kind of wedding. All right, all right. Fix it, son. Fix it. This was a wedding where you better show up dressed right kind of wedding, if you will, here. So there's something that we can conclude here about this particular man here. Mm -hmm. Somebody may wonder, well, what is it that we can conclude about this particular man here? Well, what we can conclude here is that this man didn't pay his invite any attention. Mm -hmm. All right. He saw that it was a word in there, but he didn't open it up. Mm-hmm. He knew what time it was. I imagine at the time for the word was on the cover. So he looked at the wedding and he said, oh, it's at this place. It's at five o'clock. I'll be there. I'll show up. But he didn't open it up where it was instructions on wear this. Come like this. Have on this attire. Oops. That's his bad, wasn't it? I would again ask you today, are you thoroughly going over God's invite? Are you thoroughly going over God's invitation to the wedding or are you making a light of it today? Let's be very clear about this again. This is speaking about a future day. And in this future day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to the Lord. Everyone will go before the Lord. Everyone will be judged by God. He's going to take a look at your soul. And he's going to see how your soul is dressed up, what your soul is clothed in. And God is going to ask you if your soul is not clothed in the appropriate attire, he's going to wonder why it's not dressed in the proper attire. God is going to ask you why you ain't dressed up right. You don't come in here and you are a filthy mess. God is going to ask you why you don't come in here. Why you don't come into my house a filthy mess. You see, it's not a good sign to go before the Lord and not be dressed appropriately. Now, I want you to notice that the man here, after this question from the father, the man, we're told in scripture, had no words. This this particular man who decided to come as he was, was left speechless 
When, when the king came to him and said, hey, why, why are you in here not wearing the proper attire? And because the man was not dressed appropriately there, we're told in the 13th verse, he was bound and he was taken out. He was removed from the wedding and he was cast out into outer darkness. And do you want to be cast out from the wedding? Do you want to be cast out in the outer darkness? I hope not. See, if you're not clothed in the appropriate attire, you will not be married to Christ. You will not be allowed in the wedding hall. Jesus stated that the man again was cast out into outer darkness. To be cast out into outer darkness is to be cast away from the Lord. Not for a little bit of time, but for all of eternity. Another word for out of darkness, we would say is hell. Come on. Is that where you want your eternal home to be? I, I, I kind of feel like I want to be in that wedding hall. I kind of feel like I, I want to go through the gates of heaven and, and stay there. I don't, I don't want to be like that cartoon that they show every now and then where you get to the gates and guys say, nope, you go down. And they see you down the shaft of hell. I don't want to be that cartoon. All right. All right. I personally, I kind of, I kind of want to be married to Christ. I don't know about y'all, but yeah, yeah. that's what I'm on. I, I'm trying to live to be, to be married with Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some of you now may be wondering, well, what is the appropriate attire for this wedding? Because I want to be married to Christ as well. I want to, I want to be in the wedding hall. I don't, I don't want to be kicked out. Well, what's the, what's the appropriate attire for me to be able to do this? Mm-hmm. Well, before I answer that question, I would again ask you, well, have you opened up your invite and read? Have you gone over the invitation? <laughs> Somebody may wonder, well, when did God invite me to a wedding? Well, I tell you today that he invited you through his only begotten son who said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, the Lord invited you when Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, Jesus said, come to me, and I will give you drink. You see, God, he invited you when Jesus said, abide in me, and I will abide in you. If you abide in me, Jesus said, you will ask whatever you desire and man, I'll give it to you. That sounds like an invitation to me. In the invitation, the Lord, he calls for one to again repent. He calls for one to turn to him. And when we turn away from our sins and when we turn to him through his only begotten son, we are washed clean of our sins. We will become holy. We will become righteous. In the 61st chapter of Isaiah and the 10th verse, we are told that those who turn to the Lord in total submission, in true faith, they will put on the garment of salvation. Listen to that. They will be covered with a robe of righteousness. That sounds like an attire to me. I don't know if y'all are with me yet. Do you want the garment of salvation today? Do you want to be covered in a robe of righteousness? I do. I don't know about you, but I do. See, the garment of salvation and the robe of righteousness, that's the attire that the Father has called on us to be put it on. What you putting on today in this dressing up room? You see, the father, he wants the same as any parent would want for their child. The father, he wants his son to be married to a good one. The father, he ain't going to present his only begotten son to one who ain't a good one. I don't know if you heard me on that one. The father, he ain't going to present his son to a bride that ain't holy, that ain't righteous. Yep, I'm using ain't there. I'm getting real now. 
He's not going to let his son marry just any old thing, as I said once before. As Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians, the son will one day present a glorious church that will be without spot or wrinkle. She, the church, will be holy and without blemish. If you desire to be clothed in righteousness, then as we have seen recently, you should happily receive the word of God and the word of God. It will have a change over you. You will be transformed from that sinful creature into a new creature, a creature that is holy and righteous, a creature that is fit for the kingdom of heaven, a creature that is fit to be married to the only begotten son of God. Do you hear me here today? And I tell you today that it is a dressing up room down here. And again, I ask you today, are you getting yourself ready? Are you changing out of those filthy clothes? And are you putting on the good clothes? See, I think of my mom and my dad when me and my brother would be outside and we was playing in the backyard and we'd be a, a dirty mess. They wouldn't allow us to come into the kitchen. They would stop us at the garage door before we could come in. Take off those dirty things before you come tracking that mud and that dirt through our house. That's what they would say. Andrew eyes done got real big. And God, he's not going to allow you to track in the dirty mud in his house. I don't know if you hear me on that thought there. I tell you again, now is the time for you to change out of the filthy clothes. Mm -hmm. Now is the time for you to put on the appropriate attire. Yeah. The word of God tells us when our clothes are filthy. Mm -hmm. The word of God tells us when our clothes don't fit right. Mm -hmm. The word of God, I tell you today, that if you abide by the word of God, it will have you looking sharp. It will have you looking fine. It will have you ready for the Lord. The word of God, it is a seamstress. Mm -hmm. And your clothing, it will fit. And it will look good on you if you abide by, if you heed, if you receive, if you listen to the word of God. Are you listening to the word today? Oh, yes. Again, I ask you, are you getting your soul ready for the Lord? Again, yeah, sadly, we live in a world where many of us, we, we frown at the suggesting of clothes that the Lord picks out for us to wear. You see, many of us, we have our own taste for fashion. And we say to God, no, no, man, that, that, that don't look good. Let me go and get what, what, what look good on me. Thinking that God don't have better eyes than we do. I tell you today, God got better eyes than you do. Sadly, just like in Old Testament days, many have turned down the proposal of being married to Christ. Like Israel and Judah, many desire to tend to their own business rather than accept the engagement, the invite to be married to the only begotten son of God. You see, when Jesus spoke to the religious leaders about the great supper that will take place in heaven, he said that some that many are going to miss out on that great supper. And the reason why some are going to miss out on it is because, again, some will want to tend to their own land. Some will, again, they'll want to tend to their own business, their own cattle that they had just bought. More will miss out on the great supper in heaven because they are married to another. They are loyal to another. Many are going to miss out on the great supper in heaven because they have chosen to be married to the world than to be married to God, than to be married to his only begotten son. Yeah, many live in submission to the world today. The wicked, they are clung in love. They are, again, caught up in this love with the world and they can't let the world go. It has won their heart. It has won their soul. And the sad part about it is the marriage to this world is not a good marriage. It's a
toxic marriage mm -hmm. that will benefit no one that is married to it. Mm -hmm. The world, again, it is the dressing up room. But many, they are so in love with the world that they don't see this world as a place of preparation in order to go to heaven. They want to stay here. They want to stay in this old toxic and, and corrupt world. This world that is filled with anger, this world that is filled with hatred, this world that is filled with killing and murders, this world that is filled with all manner of sin. They want to remain here. And I have to plead and ask why? Why do you want to stay here? When there is better for us. Many, they look at themselves in the mirror and they say, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with me. I look fine. And the whole time they are saying this, they fail to realize that in God's eyes, they are nothing but a filthy rag that needs a good washing. In the book of Isaiah, we are told that they are like a shriveled up leaf that is swept away with the wind. Mm -hmm. There is nothing good about them. They are rotten. They are corrupt. They are not fit for the kingdom of heaven, nor to be married to the only begotten son. But again, I say to you today that if you desire to go to heaven, your soul, it must be right with the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you desire to be married to his only begotten son, again, I say to you today, your soul, it must be right with the the Lord. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God while being clothed in wickedness. You cannot be married to his only begotten son while being clothed in sin. There are many people today that believe that the Lord will let them enter into his kingdom, into his house while they are wearing whatever it is that they want to wear. I tell you today that if you think that way, it's time for you to start thinking again. God is not going to allow you to track mess into his house. Some, I tell you, they live in the world today, ignoring God's servant, believing that they know best, believing that they'll be able to go before the Lord, believing that they'll be able to plead their case while he is judging them. Again, I want you to understand today that many of those that think that way, they're going to end up like that certain man. That when God asked one simple question, the man was left speechless. There are going to be many that believe that they can plead the case, plead their case before the Lord, thinking that they have what it takes. That will one day stand before the Lord and be left speechless when he asked them why they did not get themselves ready in this dressing up room. You see, it's a dressing up room down here. Again, I tell you today, put on the appropriate attire put on the appropriate clothes today because if you wait to stand before the Lord looking a mess, you will have waited too late. Jesus, he has shared an invitation and he has shared it over and over and over again through the sowing of his seed in our world today. And so I, I share that with you. I shared these sermons with you over these last two months to simply say that the onus is not on God for us to become holy and righteous. The onus is on us. The onus is on you to become holy and righteous so that you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. The onus is on you to get your soul right to be married to Christ for all of eternity. The onus is on all of us today. It is not on God today. There is nobody to blame but yourself if God kicks you out of the wedding hall into outer darkness. So I say to you today, take advantage of the time you have while you're in this dressing up room. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the word of God. When the word of God tells you that you are a mess, when the word of God is telling you, no, don't put that on, put this on. When the word of God tells you to put on something different, you put on something different so that you can be holy and righteous and enter into his kingdom and be married to his only begotten son. Amen. 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 Amen.